Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you watching the broadcast. And I want to encourage you to just do what you can to set everything aside and give me your undivided attention because I believe what we're going to be sharing is going to be inspirational, faith building, and it's going to build your confidence, praise God, that God is going to do something great in your life today. Now, we're going to be talking about increasing your level of expectancy. You know, so many of God's people don't expect Him to do big things in their life. They limit Him. And we're going to be talking about how that you can raise your level of expectancy and begin to believe for big things and refuse to give up. No matter how impossible it might seem, don't ever give up. Now, I'm going to take you into a live service here at our church in Crowley, Texas, Heritage of Faith Christian Center, where I was preaching on this message, increasing your level of expectancy. Now, I want to encourage you, pay very close attention. If possible, take notes, because once again, I believe this message has the ability to raise your expectation for God to do some big things in your life, not down the road a hundred years. No, I'm talking about right now. Right now. Get ready and expect God to do some big things in Jesus' name. Watch, and I'll be back in a few moments. So today, uh, I've had uh, a deep impression by the Holy Spirit over the last several days to talk to you this morning about increasing your level of expectancy. <laughs> increasing your level of expectancy. And particularly where the prophetic word is concerned for this year. Marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. Say it with me. Marvels, Marvels. wonders, <laughs> and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. The actual words expect or expectation or expectancy are not seen very frequently in the Bible, but the principle is all over the Bible. Now, there is another word that the Bible uses that means the same thing. But let me give you a couple of examples of where you can find the word expect or expectation. Uh, first of all, in Psalm 62, 5, the psalmist says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. My expectation is from God. Do I have any right to expect good things to happen in my life? I certainly do. And I get up every morning expecting good things to happen in my life. I learned from Oral Roberts years ago, something good is going to happen to me. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and tell him, something good is going to happen to me. <clears throat> and then in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18, it says, for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Thine expectation shall not be cut off. The Amplified reads this way, for surely there is a latter end, a future and a reward and your hope and expectation shall not be cut off. And then the message translation says, you won't be left with an armload of nothing. Hallelujah. You won't be left with an armload of nothing. And then the word that the Bible uses more frequently that has the same meaning as expect or expectation and expectancy is the word hope. The Bible word hope. Now, so many Christians have reduced the meaning of hope. And to hope to a lot of Christians is, well... We're just hoping and a praying. There's really no confidence in that. And the word hope from a Bible definition means a confident expectation. Amen. Amen. So if you were saying with a Bible definition, I'm hoping and praying, you would say it with joy. You would say it with expectation, not we're just hoping and a praying. Amen. And that's probably the reason why that hope to most Christians has lost its true meaning. The Bible says, listen to this in Romans chapter 15, Romans 15, 13. I pray that God who gives hope will bless you with complete happiness and peace because of your faith. And may the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope. Now, the, today's English version refers to God as the source of hope. 
It says, I pray that God, the source of hope. So hope is not a bad thing. Look at your neighbor and say, hope is not a bad thing. <clears throat> In fact, there's a lot of people wish they had the hope that you have. The Apostle Paul uh, tells us in the book of Ephesians that the only people who have a right in, on this planet to have no hope are people without God and without a covenant. That's what it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. The only people on the planet who have a right to be hopeless and have no hope are people who do not know God and do not have a covenant. Well, that doesn't speak of you. You know God. You have God. You have a covenant. Look at your neighbor and say, you have no right to be hopeless. So don't ever go around saying again, I'm hopeless. This situation is hopeless. That is not true. Not for a believer. Not for a child of God. Now get that out of your vocabulary. Amen? So notice once again, the word hope from the Bible. It means a confident expectation. It's also defined as an eager anticipation or belief that something is going to happen or take place in your life. That's a Bible definition for it. A confident expectation. Amen. So when you talk hope, when you say hope, say it with some spunk. <laughs> say it with some enthusiasm. Don't ever say, I'm just hoping and praying. If you're hoping and praying, then do it with joy. Hallelujah. Do it with an eager anticipation of what you're hoping and praying for is going to come to pass. And how do you express a eager anticipation? Well, you start shouting right after the amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't wait until you see something happen. You don't wait until you feel better. You don't wait until the bank reports to you that a deposit has been made. No, you begin to rejoice the moment you pray, God, meet that need. God, uh, heal my body. God, do this. God, do that. The moment you say amen, then praise God, you start acting as though you are expecting it to come to pass. That's real Bible hope. Amen. Now, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So if you don't have any hope, you don't have anything that your faith can give substance to. Amen. And I've heard preachers stand up and preach against hope. Well, we shouldn't have hope. You shouldn't be hoping. My Bible tells me that I am the recipient of hope from the source of hope. Amen. Hallelujah. So the word is hope. Everybody say hope. hope. Say my hope is in God. My hope is in God. Now once again, hope actually means from a Bible definition, a confident expectation, an eager anticipation or belief that something is going to happen or take place in your life. Now, winners... Where's that? Wait, uh, making winners in life? Are there any winners in the place today? All right, now, th that's, that's, our, that's our job. Remember that Freddie Prince used to say on that little TV show? It's my job, man. You know? That's my job. Make winners in life. Talk people into winning. And winners expect to win. Let's go to Philippians chapter one. And notice, here's a man in prison, the apostle Paul, facing death. And yet he says, in the worst of circumstances, in verse 19, for I know that this shall turn. Now that's a man speaking what he's expecting. I know this shall turn. It shall turn to my salvation or my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and my hope. 
Notice he says, what I'm going through right now, even though it probably had been or, or, or was the worst of circumstances he'd ever experienced. And yet he says, I know this will turn. And it's going to turn not only uh, because of your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of God, but also according to my earnest expectation and my hope. He never lost his hope even in the worst of circumstances. I think that's what happens to a lot of Christians. They lose hope when, when adversity comes. Yeah. You know, everybody can smile in church. Well, at least some people can. <laughs> everybody can, you know, feel uplifted and encouraged in this kind of environment. Yeah. But, you know, you're going to leave here in a little while and go back home. And, uh, you know, I can't go home with you. I can't jump out of your closet every time you get down and say, hey, the joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> so you're going to have to become your own best cheerleader. Yeah. Right. Amen. You get that one phone call or you get that, that one letter in the mail or, or that knock on the door, you know, and bad news is coming. That's when people start losing hope that it's not going to change, that it'll, uh, I'll never get out of this. But if you lose hope, then once again, you have nothing for your faith to give substance to. So hope is important. It's vitally important. And notice here, he says, I know that this shall turn. Even though they were coming to his cell and telling him, Paul, you're going to die today. Has anybody seen this recent movie about the Apostle Paul? And, uh, you know, they come to, the, to his cell and say, uh, we're going to take your life today. And his reaction to all that was, uh, promise, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, you promise it will happen today for me to live uh, for me to die is gain. If you kill me today, you will help me fulfill my ultimate goal. For me to die is gain. Amen. And to live is Christ. And then he made it very clear as he's writing this letter to the Philippian church that he wasn't going to die in that prison. Not right now he wasn't going to die. No, he was, he was confident he had this confident expectation that this situation was going to turn. Yeah. Amen. And so notice that he says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope. Now, faith and earnest expectation conquer all adversity. In fact, you really can't go around saying you have faith if you don't have expectation. Amen? So notice once again, faith and a confident expectation, which is one of the definitions of hope, conquer all adversity. Now, look at Psalm 33 with me. Psalm 33. I want to help raise your level of expectation today. <clears throat> and look at verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear or reverence him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Notice how often the word hope is mentioned there. In fact, the, word, uh, the message translation says it this way. The ones who are looking for his love, his confident, uh, those who have confident expectation and anticipation. He's ready to come to their rescue in bad times. 
We're depending on God. He's everything we need. What's more, our hearts brim with joy. Hallelujah. Notice how hope and joy are connected. When you have real Bible hope, you also have joy. Amen. The person who, who truly has Bible kind of hope, when they say we're hoping and praying that this will happen, then there's an expression of joy that follows it. Not sadness, but that's the way most people have reduced the meaning of hope to. That, you know, we're just hoping. We're just a hoping. How's everything going? Well, we're just a hoping. That's not real Bible hope. Because he said here from the message translation, as a result of them exercising their hope in God, what's more, our hearts brim with joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many of you, you can say today, my heart brims with joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Notice how a confident expectation produces joy. There's a principle in the Bible, and we all know it. It's, it's, it's Mark 11, 23 and 24, particularly verse 24, that implies that what you say and what you believe and what you expect you will have. What you say and what you believe and what you speak, uh, expect is what you will have. What things, whoever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So how important is hope? What you say and what you believe and what you expect is what you will have. And the expectancy comes from hope. Psalm 38, 15, for in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Psalm 39, 7, my hope is in thee. The Amplified Bible says my hope and expectation are in you. Psalm 42, 5, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Yes. Now, sometimes you have, to, you have to just walk in where you have a mirror, look at yourself in the mirror. I learned this from Kenneth Copeland 50 years ago. Just grab yourself by the ear and pull yourself in the bathroom where your mirror is and, and then take your finger and point at that image in the mirror, which is you. And say, why are you acting like this? Why are you down today? Why are you depressed? Why are you so quiet? Hope in God. Your hope is in God. You don't have anything to be sad about. You don't have anything to be depressed about. You don't have anything to be quiet about. Your hope is in God. In other words, you're talking yourself into winning. Amen? Talking yourself into rising up to a new dimension and a new level of, of faith and hope. The message translation in verse six says, when my soul is down, I rehearse everything I know about God. <laughs> Amen. When, when my soul is down, I rehearse everything I know about you, God. Amen. That's what, that's what David did when he came up against Goliath. You know, how would you like this giant coming at you and cursing you and saying, I'm going to take your head from your shoulders, little boy. <laughs> and David began to rehearse. This is what he called later in another uh, book in the Old Testament, encouraged himself. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And he said, the lion and the bear came against me and God delivered them into my hand and this uncircumcised Philistine will be as one of them. Amen. What's he doing? He's rehearsing what he knows about God and rehearsing what he knows how God has delivered him in the past. You know, Satan hopes you forget that part. He hopes that you won't remember to do that. He just hopes that that you uh, will just uh, allow the circumstances to be final authority in your life 
lose hope, have no expectation, have no confidence, and, and, and then just finally just give up. Amen. But surprise him sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And say, well, Satan, that may have worked the last time, but however, uh, you're up against a new believer, praise God, a different believer this time. And I am not losing hope. I'm not losing confidence. I'm not losing expectation. In fact, praise God, I believe I'll just shout right now in advance because I know this shall turn. Come on, give the Lord a shout in advance. <clears throat> so what do you do when your soul is down in the dumps? David said, I rehearse everything I know about God. Yes. Well, you can't rehearse what you know about God and stay depressed. Amen. 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 Your hope is going to come up to another level. Praise God. Why does the psalmist do this? Why does he say, I rehearse I, everything I know about God? It's because he's learned that his hope is in God. Yes. And since God and his word are one in the same, the book of John says in chapter one, then you could say that your hope is also in the word. Yes. Yes. So if you're down, depressed, feeling as though nothing's working, everything looks impossible, then where should you run? To CNN? No. To the view, no. Dear God, no. <laughs> or some other dumb television show? No, you don't run to that, and you don't run to unbelieving believers. And certainly not the ungodly, the world, and ask for their opinion on this. No, you run to the Word, hallelujah. My hope is in God, therefore my hope is in the Word. Can you say Amen. I can't, I can't read the word without being hopeful, confident, expectant. Hallelujah. When it says, my God shall supply. I just have to stop right there and start shouting right, right there, praise God. My God shall supply all your need. How many? All your need. Hey, that brings on a shout from me, praise God according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Glory to God. You can't read the Bible. Truly read the Bible and remain hopeless. Are you ready to live life to the fullest, a life without limits? Many people set limits on what God can do in their lives. In the eye-opening two CD series, Don't Limit God, Jerry Savelle shares biblical insight on how to remove the limits and see God move mightily on your behalf. Did you know that God is famous for doing the unexpected? In the two CD series, Expect the Unexpected, you'll learn how to get up every day expecting the unexpected from God. You can experience your greatest victories yet God wants you to flourish. In the powerful book, The Faithful Shall Flourish, Jerry Savelle teaches how to ensure that you flourish and experience days of heaven on earth. Today is the day. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the No Limits package, including Don't Limit God, Expect the Unexpected, and The Faithful Shall Flourish. It's time to shatter the limits you've placed on God and live a life full of His blessings today. Thank you so much for joining me today. I trust you have been inspired, and I believe, praise God, that if you will join with me again next week as we continue this study, it's going to keep causing you to raise your level of expectancy that God is going to do some big things in your life. Now, remember when we were teaching today in the service, we talked about how that hope is not wishful thinking. No, hope is a confident expectation. God wants you to continue to hope for big things. Not only that, but He wants you to add your faith to that hope because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And praise God, if you continue to hope for big things,
things and you begin to believe for big things, then praise God, it's going to take place in your life. So once again, don't discard hope. Hope is a Bible word. And I want to encourage you, continue to hope, continue to believe, and don't dare give up. Don't ever give up. Praise God. Now, I want to remind you of our special offer this week, my book entitled, Faithful Shall Flourish. The Faithful Shall Flourish. And then also two CDs on Don't Limit God. And we'll be talking about that a little further down the road. Uh, we're going to talk about how that you can remove every limitation in your life. And then Expect the Unexpected. Two CDs. This is a special package we're offering this week. And I want to encourage you to place your order right away. You can go to our website, jerrysavelle.org. And you can uh, discover how that you can order these products and we will send them to you right away so that the moment you get them, you can begin to listen to them. You can read the book and praise God, they are faith building. I want to thank all of our partners also for believing in us, helping us to fulfill the vision that God has given us to reach the world with the uncompromising word of faith. You know, I've been to 46 nations in the last 50 years and God continues to open new New places for us to go. People are hungry today. I really am experiencing a greater hunger in the body of Christ, and it thrills me, praise God. And I believe that God is going to cause that hunger to be fulfilled. So if you're hungry for the Word, then praise God. Get in one of the meetings somewhere where we're at, or someone like Kenneth Copeland or others that preach the Word of Faith, and continue to feed your spirit on God's Word so that your faith will continue to grow. And remember, nothing is impossible to them that believe. I also want to encourage you to connect with us through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. These are ways that we can continue to minister to you on an ongoing basis. So I think it'll be profitable for you. So go to jerrysavelle.org and uh, find out how that you can uh, find out where we are uh, in our meetings, uh, our schedule. We're somewhere near you, I'm quite sure, because I travel not only all over the world, but all over the United States as well. So get in one of our meetings, and if possible, if we have an opportunity, love to shake hands with you, and thank you for coming to the meeting. Also, join me again next week as we continue this study on causing your expectations to rise to a new level. Until then, I want to remind you that God loves you, Jesus is Lord, and praise God, your faith will overcome the world. Don't ever forget that. God loves you, Jesus is Lord, and your faith will overcome the world. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.